Hello everyone. Welcome to KSR Data Vision. So today we are going to see about what is Spring Boot, what are the features of Spring Boot, what are the advantages of uh, going for a Spring Boot. So let us see like what is Spring Boot first. So Spring Boot is a Java based Spring Framework. Right? So we had different frameworks like JS, uh, Strats and uh, the recent one is Spring which is a Java based framework for uh, used for a rapid application development for a web based development. If you want to create a web portal or like standard application using microservices, right? we can go for Spring Boot. <clears throat> we will see the comparison also. What is the difference between a Spring and Spring Boot? So Spring Boot has an extra support for auto configuration, right? So uh, earlier in the case of spring we will be um, finding out a jar and then do the configuration and everything but here in the case of spring boot i mean we can uh, add one jar where the relevant jar will be added automatically by spring boot and the application server like tomcat jetty and all, all already will be embedded within spring boot so we don't need to uh, install uh, server separately and then configure it. So these are the main use of going for a Spring Boot. So as I said, it is used for rapid application development. Right. So it can be used for standalone application as well as web based application also with minimal configuration. We don't need to repeat the code or we don't need to write a XML code. It uses convention over configuration design pattern. Okay, so there are two different framework: convention over configuration, configuration over convention. Right. So here, I mean, we don't need to uh, do write too much of coding. Only just we do the configuration. Right. Everything will be taken care of here. So here you can see in the bottom picture, a Spring Boot what it gives. Right. So earlier we had a spring framework where uh, dependency injection, uh, IOC, AOP, everything was there. Right. So that is also there. And then we are adding the server also, Tomcat, JT and everything for writing your, uh, I mean, connecting to the uh, server. So that is also there. And then it removes our manual configuration. Right. I don't need to write a bean configuration, bean instantiation, uh, bean binding, everything we can remove it. So everything together, right? It gives Spring Boot. That is the main advantage. Okay. So what are the features of Spring Boot, which makes a difference between a Spring Framework and a Spring Boot or any other framework? So it creates standalone Spring application with minimal configuration, as I like said. We don't need to write a manually dependency injection to everything. Okay, and it has embedded Tomcat server. Okay, and it has embedded H2 database also. Okay, and it provides production ready features. Like if you want to add a, a, a actuator, like you can uh, see the health condition of the server. So you can uh, see how our server is uh, running with our present application load whether it is scalable or not, how the health check is there, right? Uh, so earlier we'll be using JMeter and everything. Instead of that, we can use this activator for checking the health check. And absolutely no requirement for XML configuration. Everything is annotation, right? So right hand side, you can see what are the things. Like I can create a Spring Boot application, simple or complex one, and then lazy initialization. What do you mean by lazy initialization? I mean, whenever it is required, some of the bean configuration or whatever, whenever you need at that time, you can instantiate it. Okay, admin features, like a lot of different features are there, how we can do an integration, how do we configure it? Uh, I mean, uh, you want to change the database connection, you want to change the production readiness, everything you can change it. And security, so Spring itself has a model called Spring Space Security. So with that, we can ensure like security feature is addressed logging if uh, i can integrate sl4j logging or commons logging or whatever we want to do an audit uh, trial right everything we can do it with the help of logging caching right i want to store in my uh, 
I mean, whatever the server data I want to store in client, I can use it with the help of caching. Kotlin support. So we have Groovy, Java, Kotlin, right? So different languages support also will be provided by Spring Boot. Validation. So I want to validate a field. So earlier, uh, only Stutz was having the validation framework. Right now, I mean, Spring also has, I mean, starting itself, it was there, but it has been enhanced. So you can validate a field while, uh, I mean, uh, key in uh, itself, okay. And then JSON support. If you want to integrate with the REST API, we don't need to send the entire HTML. And so that, you just send the data through JSON or XML, right? So that way, I mean, Spring Boot will help how you can render the data in a UI frame, any UI framework from Spring Boot. And then testing. Uh, I mean, it is very easy for integrating the testing environment and then we can do, we can write the test cases and then execute uh, testing with any kind of customized framework as well as Spring framework and then uh, do it. So these are the main features of Spring Boot. So what are the advantages of uh, going for a Spring Boot? So easy to understand and develop a Spring application and we have the embedded HTTP server also which is in the which is not there in the existing framework when we are comparing spring framework we don't have that framework uh, where we can embed the uh, server so we have to manually configure it so that has been removed and then configuration is easy I'm not going to write multiple XML right increase productivity and reduce development time minimal configuration okay we are not going to write any XML configuration so these are the main advantages so what are the key components right so these are the four key components auto configuration right so we say like at the right spring boot application that will take care of everything cli i can uh, create a project and then run a project using cli command line interface and starter palm so palm.xml you declare any dependency that it will take care it will address whatever the dependency jar file you want to take it spring boot actuator where we can do the health check of the server application developing so these are the key components of spring boot so here you see like why spring boot over spring so palm.xml is one right so we are not going to find out which jar what compatibility issue everything has been removed version management i can do versioning like cacd if i want to uh, do a versioning on a file or a folder or anything i can do a version management auto configuration right so that we'll see down the line how uh, at the rate spring boot application helps multiple configuration compound scanning how this auto configuration helps compound scan like instead of uh, going through each and every file uh, if i mention a package how i can scan it what are the dependency are that so that is called compound scanning embedded server so inbuilt features of spring boot where it is not there in spring framework in built memory like h2 database is there in the case of spring boot whereas in spring we have to manually configure actuator to monitor our health check so here is the difference between spring and spring boot framework so here you can see like it's a popular framework here spring boot mainly came here to support our rest api development as well as with the help of json data i can render my ui page so it is so simple right so in spring framework uh, uh, i mean we can remove the boilerplate code but in the case of uh, spring boot i mean it is easy shorten the code development i mean you can use annotation instead of xml here in spring framework we have dependency injection iocm and everything but in the case of spring boot we are having actuator to monitor our health right and then spring is lightweight and then we had multiple components in place but here in the case of spring boot dependency management we can just add it by configuring it so whatever you want to add it you can plug in it right so again here spring framework with the help of palm.xml you can do a dependency management here in the case of spring boot auto configuration one jar you add it automatically it is going to pull other relevant jar for the particular project to run in spring framework we have to do a jdbc abstraction layer error handling and everything whereas the case of here embedded server is there going to support it here we have multiple things in case of uh, spring boot 
but here we are going to use spring initializer right starter dot spring dot io in that you are going to configure it uh, one jar will be having multiple jar so these are the main differences between a spring framework and spring boot framework so these are the features so we have seen uh, what is a spring boot what are the main features what are the key components and what makes a difference we are going to see about how spring boot works internally even though we use uh, from the application front we have to know behind the scene what is happening when we add a rotation at the rate spring boot application right so without knowing if we add it what is going to happen we will not be sure right so i'm going to see about uh, how it works so when we go to spring boot application that is the main annotation which is used for invoke the main method of the spring boot application so which is a combination of this three below annotations right so for example if you look into uh, once again it if you look into configuration uh, and then enable auto configuration and then compound scan so all three annotations club together formed the spring boot application so com component scan it's about uh, going to scan the entire packages so we'll see like each and every annotation what it does but it's a combination the spring boot application is a combination of all three annotation that is what you have to understand even if there will be an entry question will be asked like uh, what is spring boot application does okay so it works with the combination of three annotations okay what are those that we'll see So here you see first is spring boot application which is a entry point and it is the main main uh, annotation which is used to invoke our main application okay which is resides within our application itself not any other controller or any other uh, uh, repository or anything okay and spring boot application annotation is used to mark as a configuration class so if you are defining at the rate bin before spring boot came in we are using at the rate bin at the rate configuration right all those things we have to define it separately whereas the case of spring boot application when we define it is going to in turn call at the rate bin to auto configure our bin instantiate the bin right at difference injection everything will be taken care by one annotation spring boot application okay so it is similar to declaring all three different annotation like at the rate configuration you want to configure or at, at the rate enable auto configuration you want to uh, wire a dependency right configuration for your controller component scan for uh, scanning our packages so all the three annotations club together it's a spring boot application what is enable auto configuration does it configure our application context it, what is there in application context we will be having our images application properties uh, i mean uh, language specific uh, something if you are defining like uh, i want to have this application understandable by english spanish that uh, property file or your database configuration file or your bean configuration file right difference injection hierarchy everything will be automatically configured from your application context right so it creates and register your bean and it triggers your entire bean life cycle of your uh, configuration so that's why we are going for enable auto configuration and the component scan which is going to scan your entire folder structure entire application and say like uh, what are the beans we have to initialize it right now what are the beans has to do the lazy initialization uh, what are the beans has to be auto wired dependency injection has to be done all those things will be taken care by this compound scan okay so finally we are looking into this last slide so is that auto, auto configuration spring boot application is enough right so on top of it we have to know the differences also the spring starter when we talk about when we have written a pom.xml right so all these differences are automatically configured so that is also important when we are going to boot our spring boot application when the spring boot application is getting started it is going to look for all the differences for example if you are having a jpa 
then data JPA is the mandate one. So if it is not configured in pom.xml, then your application is going to fail, right? So that's why Spring Sorter is important. So whatever the dependencies are there, that is going to configure it. And it facilitates the dependency management as well. So if there is a dependency, like one dependency you are going to auto configure in pom.xml, in turn, it is going to call another 20 or 30 jars. Okay. So that's how this starter dependency works. So the starter dependency is going to help to boot our application in a smooth manner. And your, you will be having a REST endpoint application to call your REST API and then get the JSON output and then configure it your UI. So these are the very important points you have to note how the Spring Boot internally works. Hope this session is so informative for you. Thanks everyone for your time.